Hey guys, today we're gonna make some guacamole. I'm down here in Costa Rica, so I've been eating this about every day, and I want to share the recipe with you guys. Um, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut up these onions. Um, you might actually hear me uh, sniffle a little bit. That's because these onions are are pretty strong, and um, I've been trying not to cry every single time I uh, slice them up because that's kind of unmanly to do. Um, but this is a pretty easy recipe to make. Uh, it's pretty quick. I tend to put in a lot more onions than most people do because I really like them. Um, I find red onions taste a lot better than yellow onions if you're going to eat them raw. They're a little bit uh, sweeter there. But one of the tricks I learned when slicing up an onion is to not go all the way through and create a slice. So you see what I mean in a second. So you see how I'm slicing it very thin, but at that last stage right there, I don't go all the way down with the knife. So I'll show you why in a second. Alright. Now you're going to see why. Okay. And I noticed the important thing with this dish is keeping the onion slices pretty small. If you do like big chunks, there's just a little too much onion flavor and it's kind of overpowering. Now you see here I got about halfway through, maybe more like two thirds. Now you want to turn the onion like this and cut this way. It's a little easier. See it's still a little tough, but see these ends here. Nice and fine, nice and fine, and just finish the job like that. Alright. So there's our onion. Um, I'm going to put a little extra in here. And um, normally this would be about good, about half an onion. Um, but I really like onions, and I don't like to waste them. It's also. Uh, Onions don't keep very well. They kind of soak up everything in the air, like they kind of attract bacteria and all kinds of toxins for some reason. It's, it's pretty well known in the food industry that you really don't want to leave onions out. In fact, um, in most cases of food poisoning in the, in the food industry, they always ask, it's like, did you have chicken salad or something like that? Um, basically a recipe that would be left out and that has raw onions in it. So you do want to be careful with that. If you're someone who has a compromised immune system, um, you definitely want to be careful about eating anything with raw onions that has been left out for a while. And you can see this, this little trick here. It's, uh, it's not always perfect, but it's pretty good. I actually learned this um, when I did a little bit of charity work for, oh, I forget the charity. Um, I think it's God's Love We Deliver. Uh, it's very cool. It's a really cool nonprofit. And um, basically, what you what you do is you they prepare fresh homemade move, homemade meals meals made by hand to like. Um, people who don't have anybody to care for them. So like um, cancer patients and what do you call it? Um, HIV patients. And so they get about, I don't know, 20 people together uh, to work a shift in a kitchen. And they teach you how to prepare meals. And um, basically when I did it, I spent about four hours just cutting onions. So it was really good practice. Um, let's go to tomato next. Not a big tomato fan, oddly enough. I actually prefer them grilled over raw. So we're going to add about one of these small tomato tomatoes. Um, actually, now that I look about it, it's definitely a little too much onion. We're going to use about we're going to use about that much, and maybe I'll just make a double batch of guacamole and eat that up and eat that in a few hours. So. Again, the tomato slices, I like those a little thin. You don't want it, I don't like it too chunky. I don't know, some people like it chunky. Um, 
Some people like to use a time-saving tip for when they make their guacamole and they just take some salsa and combine it up with some avocados. Um, there's definitely two ways to make guacamole. There's, um, there's the traditional way where you just kind of break it up with a fork or something or you can use a uh, stone, I believe what it's called, a moleta, where you, uh, moleta. You can tell my Spanish is pretty bad, but um, you'll break it up like that. And the other way you can do, which I think is uh, the New New Mexico, uh, is where you blend it in a uh, blender and you make it very, what do you call it, very creamy instead of chunky. Um, I guess you can try it both ways. I definitely prefer chunky out of the two. I think it's more of a... Um, you get more of a interesting, maybe a little more onion, a little interesting combination of flavors. Uh, whereas if you just throw it in the blender, it's um, it feels more like something you'd use as a sauce uh, rather than something you'd use as a dip or just eat alone. I Me mean, personally, I just eat them alone um, with a spoon. And like I said, down here in Costa Rica, I've oh. I've probably been eating this two or three times a day, um, at least twice. So here's your avocado. As you can tell, they're they're pretty nice and ripe here. One of the ways to tell is you can kind of push on it. I don't know how well you can see it in the camera there. You see, I can leave a little bit of an indentation. That means it's perfectly ripe. Any more than that, a little too much. And one of the things you do want to be careful about with avocados is if they have any black spots like mold. As you can see this one's good. Um, unlike most fruits, I think avocado is technically a fruit. Um, if they do have that mold you can just scoop it out and it's fine. It's not one of the more toxic molds. I think apples have one of the more toxic ones um, and bananas so you gotta be careful with those especially if you're someone who's sensitive. So I like to do two avocados. Ah, let me explain this here. To take out the pit, it's always a little tough. I think you saw me do it on the last one, but I like doing this with a sharper, almost uh, like a butcher's knife. With one of these, it's a little tougher, a little dangerous, but you just stick it in the pit, push down and turn. Thing off. See here. So you can see here there's a little bit of that black mold I was talking about. So it's alright. You can just take it off. It's fine. Uh, which is a sad thing because the area closest to the skin, actually, I think that's just the skin coming off there. Um, the area closest to the skin is where the most nutrients are in this this particular fruit, but this is going to be quite tasty. I can tell these are perfectly ripe right now. All right, and the next step is the lime. Um, some people like to use lemon, others even rarer like to use apple cider vinegar because it's healthy. I like to use limes. I think that they're the best. If you look for picking out limes, you want a little bit of, for a ripe lime, you want a little bit of uh, like brown spot and a little bit of almost like a yellowing. And that, that means it's ripe. You're going to get the most juices out of it. Now what I like to do with my limes, I'm having a little trouble because I have the avocado on my hands. But I like to run with my fingers here, kind of pinch it, kind of like get those juices going. Um, So do that, roll it on the cutting board as well, and just take it. There you go, there's a lime. I'm actually going to put a whole lime in this now. So let's put that right there. Yeah. Go. There's one. 
A little trick I like doing is I like, I'm going to salt it now a little bit, about half the salt I'm going to put in, then I'm going to break it up with a fork, stir it up a little bit, and then I'm going to put the other half of the lime and the salt in there. So just give me a second, let me grab that salt. I like using a uh, crushed up sea salt for this. I find like the big flakes just really give it a lot of flavor. All right. Now one of the tricks with breaking this up is you want to take your time. So you just you just take the fork and you kind of break it up first. You know. Get it nice and soft before you start scooping it around. Otherwise, you're just gonna be left with, uh, you're gonna kinda flop it out of the bowl and stuff. A little easier if you have a bigger bowl, but I hate filling up my dishwasher with uh, large bowls because it kinda wastes water and, you know, um, there's nothing like a bowl to kinda clog up the dishwasher there, the whole cycle. And I find this to be the perfect amount of guacamole for two people. Um, I can eat a whole bowl of this by myself, but I'm a pretty large individual here. Um, most crouching in on six foot five and extremely active, so that definitely plays a part. Um, all right. I, like I said, I love onions, so I'm actually going to throw a little more of that onion in there. And you can see we, we used up the whole thing. I was a little worried about that at first, but I think it will be great. All right, I'm going to finish the job with a little more lime, the rest of that lime. And... going to taste for salt, how much more I should put in right now. Mm. Just about a little bit more salt. I really find it makes the flavor of the whole dish pop. And it's really interesting, I don't have any here. Um, it's hard to get liquids over the border, but I'll throw a little bit of uh, MCT oil in here too, because it's a flavor carrier. It's something that Japanese sushi chefs who use a lot of avocado and sushi have been doing for a very, very long time. Um, but basically that's it. And this is a quick, easy, what is that? Three ingredient plus four ingredient plus the salt meal. Um, and yeah, I highly recommend it. All right. Bon appetit, guys. Have a good one.